or an example that relates to what we learned yesterday. All right, so suppose that we have a rectangular prism. And of course, this is usually the way that um, the coordinate axes are drawn. X, Y being in the plane. and Z being the vertical direction. So, like I said, we don't necessarily have a cube, but we have a rectangular prism. Excuse my very poor drawing. This side is going to have a length of three. This side is going to have a length of four. We're going to figure out what the um, length of this side is. And if we draw another sort of diagonal that goes from that doesn't stay at the same elevation, we'll form a new triangle with two vectors on the sides, of course. And we also want to eventually find this angle right here. So I forgot one thing. This, this side has a side length of root 11. So the first thing I want to do is find the length For part A, I want you to find, find vector A. Um, I think this part you should remember from high school. There is a certain kind of right triangle. It's a three, four. What's the, uh, what's the length of that side? All right, five, right on. So the length of this is a uh, so the length of this is five, which since these things only this vector A only has and X and Y components, what are its X and Y components? Yeah, just, just for good measure. 
Let's give it a zero Z component. All right, someone says three and four, they are correct. Okay, so now we have another vector, let's call it B. Go to regular blue. Let's call that vector B. What are the components of vector B? Square root 11 is right. And now for something we learned yesterday. What is the magnitude of B? Can anybody tell me something we learned yesterday that tells us how to find the magnitude of a vector? There's actually two ways, but there's an easier way. Yeah, square all components, add them up and root them, but that is correct. What I, what I really wanted to say was the dot product, because that's essentially, the, yes, yes, the dot product. So, E, if you remember, is the square root of, let's, uh, let's just move over here. We have B equals three, four, root 11. And we have that the magnitude of B equals square root of B dotted with itself, which I'm going to write as three times three plus four times four plus root 11 times root 11, which is going to give us the square root of nine plus 16 plus 11. Whoa, who picked this problem? For the square root of 36. Pretty, pretty good choice. Oh. So we have that B is equal to that component wise and its magnitude is equal to six. Um, going, looking up a little bit more, 
looking back at the original figure, trying to figure out what other sort of questions I could ask that will touch upon almost everything. Um, how about we find the angle between A and B? This um, this is also either a dot product or cross product thing. You you know what? It could be both. You could do it either way. Um, I suggest doing it the dot product way because I used to like to use cross product only in the very few occasions that I need it. Um, so, if you'll remember, I believe the formula was cosine AB equals A dot B over magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. Okay, so we have A, which is a uh, three, four, zero, and B, which is three, four, square root of 11 over, we know the square root of A is five, and we know the um, square root of this, which we just found is six. And so, now to find the angle between, I guess we called it phi the entire time up there, so I guess we can call it phi now. You just take the cosine inverse of this dot product, which is 9 plus 16, 25, 25 plus root 11, 5 plus root 11 over 30. When I do that, I get the following. Make sure you are in the appropriate unit system mode. I'm going to answer it in degrees, but more often than not, you'll be required to use radians. I got the answer to be between them to be 19.2 degrees. So I want to answer ask an easy question and I want you to give me a trivial answer and then I'm going to show you that another way to do it is just as valid. What is the area of the base of this prism? Oh, Surya. Um, yes, I, I apologize for that.
I got 33.55 degrees. Is that what everybody else got? Where are the numerator values of 25 and the square root of 11 coming from? B. Well, the root 11 is gone, but 9 plus 16 is 25. 3 times 3 plus 4 times 4 plus 0 times root 11. Oh, oh you've got the vector components again. Um, for B, <coughs> well, I'll just, okay, for both A and B, we can do that. Well, I was, I gave you the length as three and the other length is four. If you travel three along the X direction, four in the Y direction, and zero in the Z direction to get the components of A. So it only has an X component of three, a Y component of four, and a Z component of zero. However, B has the same X and Y components as A but it's also lifted vertically a uh, value of root 11 to, to, um, to, okay. To, um, give it a third component. Yes. This operation right here, it is three times three. Oh, no, I, I never mind. Um, plus, Four times four plus zero times root eleven. Okay, so um, I so bef my last question before we get on to new stuff today is what is going back up to this figure? I want to know what the area of this. Let me choose a color that will, I guess, maybe that's, that's, what is the color of this yellow base? Yes, it is 12. And we're going to verify that in a very long and drawn out way using cross products. Okay, let's do this. Area of A. Well, let's call this vector C. And C will have components of just three. It will be three, zero, zero. And then let's call this other one let's call this other one D. It's not supposed to actually extend that far, it's just supposed to extend to the edge of the box, but I wanted to emphasize it. Um, we know that B has components. It does has zero X components, but it has a Y component of four and a Z component of zero. So three, zero, 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 four, zero. Let's see.
area of this um, parallelogram subtended by vectors C and D sharing a uh, common tail is done by taking the cross product. Let's call this region, um, let's call this region R. And the area of region R would be the cross product or rather the magnitude of the cross product of C cross D. And if we do that, we will, let's just, uh, I guess we can do it. Okay, let's, uh, if we remember, um, okay, finally scroll down. That's what I wanted. The, well, I'm going to call E the cross product of C cross E, and I'm going to set it up so that we can compute the um, cross product like we did yesterday using the determinant setup. C would be 300, zero, zero. D would be zero, 040. Zero. And when we do that, we're, we're going to um, the EX component is the determinant of striking out the first column, the uh, first row in the first column. So zero, zero, or zero. The determinant of that is zero. EY, you're going to get that by striking out the first row in the second column. Zero, zero, zero. That is also equal to zero. And remember how I said the point of the cross product is to produce a third vector that is orthogonal to the original two vectors? Well, guess which one of these is not going to be zero? Sorry about that. And here we had to take the negative of the determinant, but the negative of zero is zero. So it didn't make a difference right there. And this is, of course, 12. So C cross D. equals zero, zero, 12. And we could draw it up there if we want, but I think it would be all right if we didn't. Um, is there any questions about that? Orthogonal is the same as perpendicular. Um, you might ask yourself, well, why would you use the cross product, such a complex tool to do something so simple? It's because maybe one day you're not going to be taking the area of something that's easy to take the area of. You're going to have to integrate cross products. Maybe not, but maybe one day. Um, so moving on, let's go back to the material for today.
can you see my uh, yes um can can you see my pdf because i can't it says omar is on he's sharing content yeah so i don't think you're sharing you're sharing, you're sharing the wrong thing Post, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, no, no. You want to check your PDF? Okay. Let's go back. Okay. Sorry about the technical difficulties there. Um, moving on. I just went through all the stuff that I said I would save space for later. Um, to review, scalars are distance and speed. Vectors are displacement, velocity, and acceleration. I'm going to go over what those mean and how they're similar yet different. I'm going to go over it slide by slide. Um, if we take a curvy, windy, path from point A to point B, we've traversed a certain distance along that path. But ultimately, we have moved, we've only moved from A to B. We've just covered extra distance while doing so. Distance and displacement. Um, distance, like this slide says, is the total length of the path taken. And displacement is difference between final and initial position. If um, Usain Bolt runs around a track, something like this, the distance he would have covered is 400 meters. I think that's what they are, 400 meters. But ultimately, he'll be in the exact same place that he started, so his displacement is zero. I guess we should talk about speed versus velocity. As you can see here, I have a similar picture. All we're doing is really is dividing it by an interval of time. And um, if you've taken calculus or you're going to take calculus, this there's a process called taking the derivative where that delta t, that time duration, shrinks and you get the position or the speed instantaneously at a given time. But that's not to scare you. That's not to throw a bunch of things in your face. That's just to let you know that it might be something you'll encounter. Okay, so suppose now that I'm going in one direction, V1, and then I turn almost at a right angle and start go walking in the other direction, V2. And I want to know my acceleration. The acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in um, time. And of course, in calculus, this is the limiting process. Um, as you can see, if we want to find the V2 minus V1, we'll, we do just what we did yesterday. We add the negative of V1 to V2 and then um, draw head to tail. Um, I want to give you a special case of gravity. When you throw a ball up, gravity is always pointing down. It is 
empirically measured as negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and it point, points down towards the Earth. And when you throw a ball up, it slows down. When you drop a ball, it speeds up. So I don't want you thinking acceleration is always gaining more speed or losing speed. It really depends on the geometry of the problem. So let's do a similar thing that we did in the previous slide. If we want to find the difference between V2 and V1, we add the negative of V1 to V2 and then draw A. As you can see, A is pointing down, just like every physicist will tell you. It, it's throwing up and slowing down. E, oh, throwing upwards and slowing down. Okay. Okay. Falling down and speeding up. That is a hard question. Um, I don't really know the answer to that question. It would for sure go fast, but I don't know if it would be come out the other end. Not, not quite sure. Um, so when we drop a ball, at first, we're, it just releases from our hand and it goes this tiny little speed downward. And then it gets faster. Every 9.8, every second, it gets 9.8 meters per second faster or slower, depending on which direction you're going. So if we wanted to find acceleration, which is the change in velocity over change in time, we again would do V2 minus V1 and draw A. And then you'll see in both instances, A is pointing down. And with that said, I didn't want to spend uh, too much time on this. I wanted to get to the problems, but before we do the problems, we're going to have to derive some equations. This should be it. No, I wanted to share one note. All right, back to the drawing board. There are three, well, Let's say five equations that are used to describe motion where acceleration is constant. Um, we will deal with them in one dimension, but the generalization for them in three dimensions is the same. Each component has a dimension of acceleration or velocity or position, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, with that said, I'm going to make some brief mention of calculus. I'm not going to indulge in it, but I will briefly mention it to you. And if you're like, oh, no, I don't know this, it's fine. You, it will be fine. Um, you don't need to. So if A is constant, it will always equal A. A, of course, is acceleration. Um, what you can do then is take the integral of A, quote unquote, and if you take the integral, you will get Vf 
equals VI plus AT. And if you take the integral of that from acceleration to velocity back to position, again, velocity is the change in position in time. A is the change in velocity in time. You will get I'm going to call it V naught instead of VI and S naught instead of SI. So those are um, those are equations one, two, and three. there are two more equations that we're going to derive and they're going to be derived from these three equations. If you solve, if you, if you solve, solve two for A, you will get BF minus BO over T. Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, and if you solve and if you plug that into and if you plug that into three, if you plug that into three, you will get SF equals SO plus VOT plus one half VF minus one half VI or VO. Um, all of that is over T, and then you have a T squared, so all of these will be T's as well. And then when you do that, you will get SF equals SO plus one minus one half is just plus a one half. B plus And if, um, if you arrange this, you will get another this equation, simply just moving it over to the other side. That's all it is. Or 2t. And see, if you then solve one, if you then solve, and I'm going to call this equation four. You then solve one for T, you get VF minus VO over A. Now you're going to plug it into four.
we get SF minus SO equals VO plus VF over 2 VF minus BO over A that is equal to VF squared minus VO squared over 2A which if you, you probably remember in um, high school maybe you saw this equation equals let's call that equation um well call that equation five And um, I guess with all that, I think it could be time to do some problems. This problem, it's written this way. I cannot come up with it. I do not know anything about antelopes, and I have no idea why they would have a constant acceleration, but apparently they do. All right, so I'm sorry for taking so long to write that question. Um, but here it is. Antelopes have a constant accelerator. Probably in the book. I got to be honest, I got this from somebody else. It covers a distance of 70 meters in seven seconds with a final velocity of 15 meters per second. Okay, so out of all the five or six equations, which one do you think we should use? I want to know uh, what was the initial speed.
and there was a one more um we can't see this i guess so they can all fit on the same page it was vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta s five The uh, final velocity of the antelope, I believe, was 15. Um, so we know, look at, if we look at number one, equation A, A equals A. Well, that's the most obvious statement you could possibly think of. It's a constant thing. It will always equal a given value and be that value forever and ever. Um, we do have his final velocity. We do have his initial velocity. That's what we're trying to find. We do have T, but we don't have A. So we can't use number two. Four, I like four. I like four, let's use four. Um, so we have SF, which is going to be, let's scroll down a little bit. Somebody suggested that we use four, SF minus S zero equals So yes, we can. Um, if we solve this, we will get So let's uh, let's do this. So VO would be um, I did get five. Yes. Yeah. So whoever got five seems like many of you did did a great job. But let's just complete these notes. Two times the final position. I'm just going to call that seventy, and the initial position. I'm just going to call that zero. And it happens in seven seconds. And then we have to subtract 15. And yes, we do get VO equals 5.00 meters per second. All right. Now we want to know A. There's probably many answers to this question of which equation you want to use since we pretty much have all information at this point except for A. So I'm thinking we could probably use any one, but after a while you'll start to have a preference. during the sequence of events. Um, let's see. Let's go back off up to the original equations. Um, you know, there's only, there's only three equations which
there's three equations which have A in them. Um, we know what the initial and final velocities are. We could perhaps use two. Oh, two is easiest. I'm glad somebody said that. So from VF equals VO plus A delta T, we have that, what is it? A equals VF minus VO over delta T. Would you, would you look how easy that is? Well, the final velocity, I believe, was 15. The initial velocity, I believe, was uh, five, and this happened over seven seconds equals 10 over seven seconds equals 1.43, I believe. So A equals one point four three meters per second squared. Okay, so let's, um, that was the first problem. Now we're going to talk about a man who's going to throw a ball off of a cliff. Just draw a picture. He's four meters off the ground. Okay. And he throws a ball straight up. And it comes straight down in a perfect world. Um, the first thing I want to know is what is the time And before you uh, answer this question, I just want to say before I ask directly which equation we should use, 
I'm going to uh, talk about what we know, what is specific to what is specific to when the ball hits the ground? How would you describe that condition? Velocity is zero when it reaches its apex and then quickly turns around, but its terminal velocity when it hits the ground is not zero. Um, the 40 millimeter of displacement, I, I like that. I like that idea. If we call this Y naught and we do that at 40, then Y ground um, I'm, I'm not going to call it Y final um, because we're going to be dealing with different stages of this trajectory. So final means different things to different parts of the problem. Um, I'm going to call it Y ground. What would that be? Zero. Yes. Okay. So. Going up to equations one through five again, which one should we use? Um, the velocity of the ball is zero when, um, uh, I mean, not to sound vulgar, but like people, if you believe the velocity of a ball is zero when it hits the ground, um, I, I don't think you take me up on your on a bet to like throw a ball at your face when you're on the ground. Um, sorry. Um, it, 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 re, it is rest eventually, but I'm talking about like right, 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 right before it hits the ground. I guess that's um, I guess that's an important distinction to make. Terminal velocity in its terminology is what it is like right before it hits the ground. Not when it hits the ground, but like right before. So going back, uh, which equation should we use? I mean, lots of fours here. Um, hmm. Four. I was going to use three, but let's try both. Um, No, we don't know. Actually, for four, we don't know the final velocity when it hits the ground or right before it hits the ground. Three. Let's use three. Okay. How, how do you... Now, remember, uh, I guess you can call it YF, but I'm going to call it Y ground. Um, that is going to be equal to the initial height plus the initial velocity in the Y direction times um, T plus one half minus 9.8 T squared. Yeah, three for a uh, gravitational acceleration works great. Um, so we can, um, we can solve this. We can do uh, zero equals minus 4.9 T squared plus 5T 
plus 40 and we can do the whole quadratic formula, but you're going to, going to get a T negative Let's, without actually doing it, unless somebody really likes to do the quadratic formula. What is the difference between Y and a Y not? Are you talking about uh, this right here? Where I have my, um, where I just scribbled. Um, that's not Y, not Y. That's V, not Y. And it's meant to be the initial velocity of the Y direction. Uh, no worries. Thanks for asking. Um, going back to, uh, Going back to trying to solve for T, we have a quadratic equation. We could use the quadratic formula, but when we do, we're going to get one that's we're going to get one that's negative, and we're going to get another that's positive. So, which one are we going to choose? Yes, positive, because to say negative time, I guess it does make sense, but why are you going to ever watch an event take place and start your stopwatch at five seconds instead of zero seconds? That's just me. So when we do use the quadratic equation, we get T equals 3.41 seconds. I guess we should call it T ground because like I said, it's not about Final is about the different stages. Okay, for um, part two of question two, I want to know the velocity. And um, I'm glad somebody brought up that question about why the velocity isn't zero when it hits the ground. It eventually will be zero once the ground brings it to rest. But usually in these questions, in this context, it means speed of the ball right, right, right before it hits the ground. And I reminisce on when I started learning physics and this that was one thing that actually tripped me up as well. So thanks for asking that question. Velocity before it hits the ground. Okay, so let's go back up to um, these have equations again. Um, here they are. We have two pretty equal methods here. So, uh, hmm, two. Yeah, we could do that. No, the last, well, we, we, yeah, we found time when it took to hit the ground, so uh, that makes perfect sense. Why not just plug it in? I was thinking something more complicated than that, but that makes perfect sense. VF equals, let's call it Y, VFY, or let's call it V ground Y. equals VOY 
plus minus 9.8 T, that's acceleration. And we had um, our initial speed was five upwards minus 9.8 times 3.41. And I have every reason to believe that this will work and get the same answer as mine. Actually, I don't, I'm not sure this one, um, this one is, actually it works, never mind, it works. Zoom in, right here. All right. And for the very last question, we're going to end a little bit early, but if there's anything anybody wants to ask me afterwards, I'll stick around. Um, the last question is, let's see. Oh, okay. Well, okay, let's, let's do that. Um, I didn't even write the answer to this. I just said it works. So I apologize for that. Um, I got... 28 point minus 28.41 less um, meters per second. It's obviously traveling in the downward direction. Um, another way was the um, VF squared equals VOY squared minus two times time point, point eight times minus 40. So VF will equal the square root of VO I squared plus two times 9.8 times 40. VO Y was five, so five squared is 25. 25 plus that gives you about the same thing. I would stick to uh, calling downwards the negative direction. Um, yeah, you can play a lot of mathematical tricks with um, getting the correct answer based on interpretation, but the point is to be uh, speak a language everybody else would likely speak, and most people would refer to down as the negative direction. And the last question is going to be highest Okay, so let's see.
remember when somebody earlier said today that is the velocity of the ball zero when it hits the ground? It eventually becomes zero. But um, I said something around that time. When is the velocity of the ball actually zero? At the peak, right on. So well, if at the peak, um, VF would equal zero, and um, we don't really care about delta T, we just want to know the distance, I would use five. And we're going to use five. Like the um, f y squared, which in this case would be v top y squared, would equal minus two times. Minus two times nine point eight delta H, or call it delta Y. Um, that is that's comparing when the ball was thrown up to when it reaches the top. So let's uh, we know V this is zero. I mean we know that the velocity at the top is zero. Okay, I, I, so what we have here is that delta Y would equal V at the top we know is zero. We know that V O at the bottom, when when the guy begins to throw it at the top of the cliff is five. So we have minus twenty-five over minus two times nine point eight. And that gives us an answer of 1.27 meters. There's something wrong with this answer. What have I forgotten to do? Add 40, absolutely. So max height. Delta H, delta Y really does not matter. Um, so it would equal. 40 plus 1.27 meters. Plus 1.27 meters. Would you need this? Would you need this one point two seven meters? It's always accelerating due to gravity. It's just whether gravity is speeding up or slowing it down. Does the uh, forty one point two seven meters make sense to everyone? Um. Yeah, you, that is correct. It doesn't, it takes 
some time to reach its peak and then start accelerating downwards. So the guy throws it up 1.27 meters from the cliff he's standing on. It slows down to zero and gravity starts to speed it up as it falls from its max height. Did that help? Okay, cool. All right. Um, that's all I have for today. Are there any other questions? Which formula? The uh, H max? Oh, um, I guess I sort of, I didn't make it up. I'm, I'm just saying, if, I mean, you don't even have to think about this in this like pedantically mathematical way. You can just think the the guy throws it up 1.27 meters and he was already 40 meters off the ground to begin with. Yeah, of course. Um, why is 20? Because um, it goes over to the other side. All right, so I think that is good. Um, before we go, would tomorrow, would most of you like to practice more kinematics, which we did today, which is describing motion, or would you like to go on to forces? Forces, all right, right? Well, that says it all. Okay, forces, we're doing forces tomorrow. All right, guys, so if you want to download the notes, um, I'm uploading the slides right now. So once I share it, you'll be able to uh, download the slides. And then if you give us a couple of minutes, um, we can get a PDF of the one note. One note. Yeah, so give us a minute for that. Plus, this thing worked perfectly. I think it was a very good exercise. I remember that for the first week. What is the, what is this called? The world's most gigantic. One note pad, like it, is is this just like the answer to the iPad right here? Like is this just like is this just a larger version of Microsoft's iPad? iPad is um, so the iPad is the uh, Apple's um, no. Okay, a tablet. Is that it's just that just the larger tablet? Thanks for remembering to record it.